Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Shabir Safi and today we are going to explore how Istio incorporates circuit breaker pattern and then we are going to implement it on our local Kubernetes cluster. So let's get to it. All right, so let's first understand what is circuit breaker pattern and why it is needed in microservices architecture using a practical situation. Imagine you are building a complex system using microservices and each microservice is responsible for handling specific tasks. Let's say we have three microservices deployed, service A, service B, and service C. Both A and B rely on service C to perform certain operations. Now, every service has something called a thread pool, which determines how many requests it can handle at a given time. If this thread pool gets exhausted, any subsequent requests will be dropped. So what if service C starts experiencing issues? Maybe the server it's deployed on is acting up, or there is a resource-hungry process causing trouble, or perhaps it's connected to a slow-performing database. The reasons could be endless. However, the result remains the same. A degraded service C can cause thread exhaustion in our caller services like service A and B, as they wait endlessly for a response. And that's where things get really messy because the failure of one service can potentially cascade through the entire application stack, affecting other services and bringing the whole system down. To prevent this catastrophic cascade, a service client should invoke a remote service through a special proxy acting like an electrical circuit breaker. This proxy keeps a close eye on specific metrics such as the maximum number of connections or consecutive count of 500 errors thrown by a service. Once these metrics cross a certain threshold, the circuit breaker kicks in, breaking the circuit and immediately failing any attempts to invoke the remote service, therefore preventing the entire system from going down. Okay. So now that we have the foundation, let's see how Istio implements this pattern. There are two important components that are in play here, Envoy proxies and destination rules. First, we have Envoy proxies. We know that each service in Istio has its own Envoy proxy sidecar, and they intercept any requests coming into or out of the service. And then we have destination rules. These rules specify how traffic should be managed for a particular service. And it's here that we set parameters like maximum number of connections, maximum requests, and thresholds for error rates, etc. for the circuit breaker. Now, let's go back to our example. Each of our services now have an on wipe sidecar, which is intercepting all requests. So when a request is made from the source service, in our case, it could be service A or service B, it first passes through the source Envoy proxy associated with that service. The source Envoy proxy then is responsible for intercepting the request and evaluating the circuit breaking thresholds specified in the destination rule associated with the destination service, in our case, service C. So, if the request violates any of the circuit breaking thresholds, such as exceeding error rates or maximum connections, the source Envoy proxy triggers the circuit breaker and preventing further requests from being sent to the unhealthy service C. And in a more practical scenario, you are probably going to have multiple instances for each of these services, including service C. So, Istio will effectively remove only the bad service, in service instance from the pool and that's how Istio will protect our system by isolating and excluding that instance from receiving requests. So I hope this high level explanation made some sense, but don't worry, let's jump into our demo and hopefully it will make things even more clear. First, let's get our kind cluster created. Execute the create cluster script in the service mesh gateway directory. 
As always, you can find the link to the GitHub repository in the description box below with all the code and scripts. Once the cluster is ready, let's go ahead and deploy our Istio setup. Execute the install gateway script in service mesh gateway directory and it will deploy all the Istio components along with monitoring tools like Grafana and Kiali and this may take about 4-5 to five minutes. Okay, now that our setup is out of the way, open the circuitbreaker.yaml file under the service mesh traffic management directory. And in this demo, I'm going to show you guys two different ways in which we'll trigger the circuit breaker. First, let's look at our services we are going to deploy. Our first service is called Fortio, which will serve as our source service. Fortio is an exceptional open source tool for load testing and observability. It enables us to simulate various levels of load on our destination service, allowing us to examine different scenarios and their effects. Next, as our destination service, we are deploying two replicas of HTTP bin service. HTTP bin is a very popular web service that provides HTTP endpoints to help experiment with different HTTP features. And we are deploying two replicas here so we can test what happens if one of them is misbehaving. Now let's look at our destination rule for the HTTP bin service. Under the traffic policy section, we are configuring some circuit breaker settings. For the first scenario, we only need to talk about the connection pool section. Under TCP connections, the max connections setting is set to 1. This means that the service allows only one TCP connection at a time. For HTTP connections, the configuration includes two important settings. First, HTTP max pending requests is set to 1. This means that the service allows only one pending request at a time. So when the number of pending requests exceeds this limit, it will trip the circuit breaker and halt new requests from being processed. Second, max requests per connection is set to 1. This means that only one request is allowed per connection. OK, now let's apply this manifest and deploy all the services. Let's check if all the services are ready. Copy the pod name of our Fortio service and we are going to curl the get endpoint of HTTP bin service. So we get a successful response back. Now we are going to increase the load on the HTTP bin service. We are going to set a total TCP connections to 2 and we are going to send 20 HTTP requests simultaneously and see what happens. If we look at our output now, we see that 40% of our requests had returned 503s, which is service not available error. Okay, let's crank it up a little. And this time we are going to increase the total request to 35 and set the TCP connections to 5. And this time 74% of our requests return 503. So in these two examples, we are seeing the circuit breaking behavior. Only 25% of the requests succeeded in this example and the rest were trapped by a circuit breaker. So we know our circuit breaker is working, but we should also know how to monitor this behavior. For that, we are going to use Grafana. In a new tab, we are going to port forward the Grafana service on our local port 8080. Let's copy this and open it in our browser. Use username and password as admin to log in. Now navigate to explore and search for the metric upstream 
RQ pending overflow. And select the default namespace where we have all of our services deployed. And select the Fortio app. You can see 34 of the upstream RQ pending overflow value which means 34 calls so far have been flagged for the circuit breaker. All right, so that was scenario number one, where we intentionally overloaded the service with a higher load than it could handle, which triggered the circuit breaker mechanism. Now let's go back to our destination rule and let's see another way we are going to trigger the circuit breaker. Under the outlier detection, we are configuring few fields, so let's talk about them. First, we have base ejection time that determines the duration for which a specific instance will be excluded from the pool if it is deemed faulty or underperforming. So in our case, a faulty instance should be out of the pool for at least three minutes and no request would be sent to it during that period. Then we have consecutive 5xx errors which simply means how many consecutive 5xx errors uh, an instance can throw before it is deemed unhealthy by Istio, and it should be taken out of the pool. Interval suggests how often we are analyzing the instances, and the max ejection percent defines the maximum percentage of instances of the service that can be ejected. So in a real scenario, you probably wouldn't want to remove all the instances of a service but for our demo, we are setting this to 100, and I believe the default value is 10. Okay, so now let's go back to our terminal and let's get the name of our Fortio pod. And this time we are going to invoke an endpoint in HTTP bin service to simulate a 500 server error. Okay, so we got the 500 response. Since we have deployed two replicas of HTTP bin, it is uncertain which specific instance returned the 500 error. However, one of these instances should have triggered the circuit breaker mechanism, leading to its removal from the available pool of instances. And as a result, the faulty instance will no longer be considered for handling incoming requests. But again, how do we monitor that our instances are unhealthy and taken out of the pool? So let's go back to Grafana. And this time we are going to search for a metric called outlier detection ejections active. Basically, this metric will tell us which instances currently are ejected from the pool due to the circuit breaker. And we now see that there is one instance that is currently ejected. And since our base ejection time is three minutes, which means that this instance should be added back to the pool after three minutes. So let's wait for about four to five minutes and rerun this query. And now we see that there are zero ejected instances again. And that was our scenario two in which we saw a circuit breaker in action when an instance was returning 5xx errors. All right, guys, so that's it for today's video. I hope you understood all these concepts and I'd encourage you to try it yourself. And if you found this video useful, uh, leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.